Thank you, MJ. So uh, as MJ said, now we're going to talk about the upgrade to S4 HANA Private Cloud Edition. So uh, SAP came out with the Software Update Manager. The Software Update Manager, or SUM, is what all customers use to update their SAP systems. Uh, they then came out with the SUM DMO, or Database Migration Option, as part of Software Update Manager. This allowed you to migrate to a different database, namely HANA, as part of a, a one-step upgrade. So if you're coming from uh, something like Oracle, DB2, um, Microsoft SQL, you can do a one-step upgrade and uh, one-step upgrade and database migration uh, with one upgrade and one downtime. So <clears throat> then SAP came out with the SUM DMO with system move option. This allows you to move your system to a different data center uh, migrate to the cloud, infrastructure as a service providers, other hyperscalers. So this came out in, uh, I think, roughly 2017. And so it's, it's, it's not a new tool and it's not, uh, but it, and it's gone through multiple iterations and, and support packages with the, with the SUM tool as it's been updated over time. So uh, this is still the standard SAP tool that you're going to do when, when migrating to uh, the private cloud edition. And so this, this, as I said, gives you that one step, one downtime uh, ability to upgrade and migrate to a different data center uh, as part of uh, your upgrade project. Next slide, please. So the DMO with system move has, has two different options. The first we'll talk about here is, is the serial mode. So the, the, the serial mode for the database migration option is a transfer mode uh, in which only one data transfer happens. You'll run the complete SUM procedure in your source landscape. And this also includes entering downtime and then exporting the database out. And until that is completed, um, you then copy the SUM folder from the source to the target. Uh, once the SUM folder is all the way migrated to the target, you then continue the procedure and, and in this, the shadow operations actually run in downtime. So this is going to significantly extend your downtime. There's, there's minimal use cases for using the serial mode. You know, and one that I can think of is, is say you have a uh, really um, low bandwidth for your, for your WAN traffic. And so you might need to export the system out to a hard drive and, and ship it uh, to your provider. And they would then import it on their side. This gives you that flexibility to be able to do a complete export and then send the data over to the target where it can then be imported. Next slide, please. Next is the parallel mode. Uh, parallel mode is the recommended approach for uh, from SAP. So this transfer mode is based on a continuous data transfer to the target. So you'll run the procedure in your source system until you get to a specific dialogue in the in the software update manager. And this is all still in uptime. So from a production standpoint, you're still able to do all your operations in your ECC system and operate as usual. So once you define the, the parallel mode and you then start a synchronization of your sum folder, this goes from the source to the target. You could either do this manually or SAP has a, a, an rsync delivered script that comes as part of the sum tool. So once that initial synchronization of the sum tool from the source to the target has completed, uh, you can then um, start the sum tool on the target. So in the, in the PCE scenario, SAP will, will actually start this uh, for the partner in coordination with the partner, because uh, as MJ alluded to, uh, they're now the hosting provider and they own the OS level activities there. So they'll start this uh, SUM tool and then you will then, the partner will then take over and execute uh, the SUM application. This is all while still in uptime. So on the target, the SUM tool will execute all the shadow operations. Now, if you remember from the serial mode, those shadow operations happen in downtime, but in this uh, parallel mode, it happens all in uptime. So uh, you will then once the shadow operations are complete, it's then kind of sitting there waiting to import the dump files that are going to be exported from the source system. So you're then going to enter downtime on the source system, and it'll actually start creating those ex ex 
export files. And these are then synced over from the source to the target and imported into the target system. So this is all done in bar parallel into the target system and then the upgrade finishes. Now, because you already completed the shadow operations and we're importing the dump files at the same time as we're exporting them, there's a little lag at the end for the final files to be synced over. They're then imported and then the upgrade will then finish. This greatly reduces the downtime uh, significantly over this serial mode, which is why it's the recommended approach uh, by SAP when you're using the uh, some DMO with system move option. Uh, next slide, please. So some of the requirements for using the DMO system move option. Um, as with any upgrade to S4 HANA or even a migration to HANA, uh, you need to be Unicode um, in your ECC system today. So if you're non-Unicode, you'll need to do a Unicode conversion prior to your move to S4 HANA. Um, a single stack is required for ABAP. And so if you have a dual stack system today, you'll need to uh, split that, that Java system off of the dual stack to make the uh, ECC system a single stack system. So also uh, for anybody that maybe is running on uh, Suite on HANA uh, or, or um, S4 HANA Finance, uh, HANA as a source is not supported for DMO with system move. This will require a two-step upgrade. Also, from a DMO with system move um, perspective, people may have heard of some uh, downtime optimized scenarios for some DMO. Uh, the downtime optimized S4 HANA conversion and the downtime optimized DMO are not supported with the system move option. So if you were doing a standard sum DMO scenario, these options would be available to help reduce your downtime. But from a system move option, uh, we don't have those available. Next time, next slide, please. So touching on the customers that are already running on the HANA database platform. So because this is using the DMO database migration option and you're already on HANA, SAP doesn't allow you to migrate from HANA to HANA. So we have this limitation where we can't use some DMO and so we will actually uh, migrate your system from your on-premise uh, or hosted environment and do a lift and shift. We don't need to upgrade anything. We simply uh, can do HANA system replication to move the system over or a backup and restore using a HANA backup. Restore the system over to your S4 HANA Cloud PCE environment and then actually do the system conversion using the software update manager. So. Uh, Two steps, two downtimes, um, but uh, it still gets you to the uh, to the uh, end of being on the S4 HANA Cloud uh, Private Cloud Edition. Next slide, please. So, uh, from a conversion perspective, uh, the minimum release is going to be ECC six. Any enhancement pack, but you want to make sure that, and, and you know, if you're on an older enhancement pack, you want to make sure you're at a at a supported support package stack level. So you want to verify this all ahead of time, but you can do a one-step conversion and database migration over to S4 HANA 2020. 2020 is the minimum release when you're coming from ECC 6 uh, that you can go to and uh, running on the HANA database and uh, SAP is going to run that system at the OS level uh, running on SUSE Linux. Next slide, please. Next, for uh, customers that are already on S4 HANA, um, as long as you're on 1709 and higher, uh, 1709, 1809, 1909, or 2020, you can do a system copy like for like and not upgrade your system over to the private cloud edition uh, of SAP S4 HANA. Uh, next slide, please. So some of the technical qualifications uh, that are gonna come into play, as we said, uh, from in S4 HANA perspective, as long as you're on 1709 or higher, you can system copy directly over. Uh, when we look at 1511, which uh, mainstream maintenance ended at the end of 2020, uh, those systems SAP uh, requires you to upgrade to the latest release in the source landscape before migrating over to uh, PCE. Um, for 1610 customers, that support is ending mainstream maintenance at the end of this year, 2021. SAP is going to require you to upgrade to the latest release as part of the migration. So that means you can 
um, migrate over to PCE, then do your upgrade to S400 2020. Um, and as we said, all ECC6 releases, any enhancement pack require a system conversion to S400 2020. Uh, and as with uh, the 1709, 1809, and 1909 versions, SAP is going to recommend that as part of that, you upgrade to the latest release, but you are supported on the, on the platform that you're on, so you could just do a system copy over. Next slide, please. So from a, an upgrade and migration project for customers that are moving to uh, S400 Private Cloud Edition, you're obviously working with a, with a partner that's going to be helping you move and you're, you're going to be working with SAP who is now uh, going to be hosting your system in the, the private cloud edition. So partners are going to initiate the upgrade as, as they would in any scenario uh, in your system in your current landscape. And there's going to be constant coordination between that partner and SAP throughout this process. Now SAP as they own the OS level over on the a hyperscaler that, that you're going to be using for PCE, they're going to execute any of the OS level active commands and stuff that are that are part of the software update manager and any other activities that are part of the, the migration. So, and they're going to intervene anytime you have any errors that need to be addressed as part of the upgrade in that target system. So once they execute those OS level commands, then the partner is going to resume the upgrade within the software update management manager tool continue the upgrade, complete ever all the post-processing, and then kind of hand the system over to the SAP cloud team uh, to host and manage that system. So a lot of coordination between uh, the partner and SAP throughout this process, as well as with the customer. 